Here we can see the stock performance, nothing has been modified yet. We're getting around 60 FPS and temperatures just under 70 degrees. So here we have the machine running with the power limit at 10 watts for around 5 minutes and we can see two things. The temperatures are now getting out of control, they are beyond 90 degrees. Now we've improved the cooling solution and we're getting good performance around 79 to 80 FPS but much better temperatures. Hey guys, welcome to another video where we're gonna work with the Chewy Lapbook. We removed the screen, I tried to fix something and I broke it in the process. You guys coined it a half top, so that's what we're working with today. In the previous video, I will put a link up here. We found that the gaming performance is actually quite decent, especially for older games. But in this video, we will find out that we can unlock a lot more potential by overclocking the thermal limits and improving the cooling solution. I also got a few comments about ordering a LCD controller board to turn the panel into a monitor. So I've identified the right component, I've ordered it and it should arrive in a week or two and hopefully that's another project we can show on the channel. And do stick around to the end, I will give you three tips of improving your experience with such a half top. So the first thing I like to do is see the performance out of the box. So we have MSI Afterburner running with all the monitoring uh, options enabled. We're going to use Portal. If you're not aware, Portal is actually DRM free. So if you purchased it on Steam, you can just copy it out of the folder and use it on another machine. Here we are in the game Portal and we can see the performance around 59 to 61 FPS and temperatures between 60 and 70 degrees. I've also plugged the laptop into a power meter. Now this is off camera, but it's showing between six and seven watts of power consumption. So the Intel Celeron, which has an integrated HD graphics, can perform a lot better, but it's held back by uh, temperature limits and power limits. So we're gonna use this software uh, read-write utility. It can uh, change values in the memory. And I've got all the shortcuts here. And all you have to do is copy the software uh, onto the desktop and then create a shortcut. And then uh, you right click on that shortcut. And at the end here, you just add that uh, command option here. So I will put this uh, on our, onto our website so you can just copy paste all of that. And we have three shortcuts. One that will raise the default power limit from six watts to 10. Then we've got another one which raises the limit to 15 watts and this one uh, unlocks the entire limits altogether, so there won't be any limits whatsoever. So let's raise it to 10 watts, we're just gonna run this shortcut, say yes to the prompt and off we go. And here we can see that was successful, the power limit shows up as 10 watts in the hardware info tool. So here we have the result with the power limit set to 10 watts. We can already see much better FPS, well beyond 80. But look at the temperatures, they are a lot higher now. Looking at the power meter, it shows around uh, 11 watts of power draw. So that's uh, confirming that everything is working. We're going to let this run a few minutes and we're going to see what the temperatures go up to. So here we have the machine running with the power limit at 10 watts for around 5 minutes and we can see two things. The temperatures are now getting out of control, they are beyond 90 degrees and also the performance has gone down a little bit, we're not uh, over 80 FPS anymore. That's the processor basically protecting itself by thermal throttling. So we will definitely need to improve the cooling performance before we try some of the higher power limits. So to see why the cooling performance is so bad, we need to open the machine. So we're just gonna unscrew all the screws at the bottom of the laptop. So here we have the machine opened. We can see the uh, processor and chipset and some RAM modules in this area. There was a metal shield uh, that protects that area. We can also see on the opposite side here, um, there's uh, a metal strip and some kind of a plastic protection here, maybe to avoid uh, any shorting out going on. So here we have some of the parts that you could use, copper shim, memory coolers, chipset coolers, uh, new thermal pads, alcohol to clean stuff off with uh, those cotton buds, new thermal paste of course. Now I'm not quite sure which option is actually the best, so I want to hear your uh, input first. So we're just going to go with um, a solution that's not really uh, practical, but it's gonna show the best performance and the best cooling solution. So we're gonna use one of those uh, memory coolers onto the CPU. Then I'm just gonna 
put a USB uh, fan on top of it using a power bank. So we're just gonna carefully remove that uh, existing thermal pad. Alrighty, so here we can see the processor. There's still a bit of dirt on here, so let's wipe that off. And we're gonna use some alcohol. And before it evaporates, just give it a very good clean. Our experiment is ready to go. We've got the cooler on the processor and the Arctic USB fan blowing some cold air. So we're going to turn it on and see what difference it makes. Okay, so I just jumped into the game. We've got the 10 watt power limit like before. Uh, temperatures just over 50 degrees and 85, 83 FPS. So I'm going to run it for five minutes again and we'll come back and have a look at the performance and the temperature. It's been running with the improved cooling solution for a while and we can see the temperatures are much better, just under 60 degrees and the performance is still quite up there, uh, just below 80 FPS. So at this point, well, what can we do? We're gonna quit the game and we're gonna increase the power limit even further. So here we are back in hardware info and yep, yeah, 15 watt power limit is active. So unfortunately not much has changed, the performance and the temperatures seem to be the same and looking at the power meter it's only reading around 10 watts so there might be another limitation uh, in the bias for example that doesn't let you override the power limit but we're gonna quit one more time and we're gonna try the unlimited um, option here so let's see if that makes a difference. So in hardware info, here we can confirm it's now set to unlimited. So we're still seeing the same performance even with the unlimited power profile. The power meter is still showing only 10 watts. So it seems uh, 10 watt is as high as we can push it. So obviously using such a large cooler and a fan, that is the ideal situation. Uh, and it was really only for experimental purposes to see what is actually possible. So I'd love to hear your ideas of how you would uh, improve the cooling solution. Uh, we have a few parts here to work with, but if you can think of anything else, let me know. Really looking forward to hearing how you would solve the cooling issue. In the meantime, I just went with the thermal pads. I put one on the processor and two on those uh, other components that already had a thermal pad. Then I put the metal shield on top and I uh, plastered five more of these thermal pads on the back. And that seems to be working. It's transferring a bit of heat uh, to the back of the casing of the computer and we're getting better performance. So instead of around 60, we're getting just under 80. And the temperatures, 80 degrees, that's fine. It's better than the 90 something we saw earlier. And now to our three tips like I promised in the beginning of the video. So the first issue I encountered was the proximity of the backspace and the power button. And of course, by accident, I hit the power button and the machine uh, shut down. So let's have a look at solving this issue. So to fix that issue, I recommend that you go into the power options and on the right side here, additional power settings. And you can actually decide here, choose what the power buttons do. And when I press the power button, just change it to do nothing. So that will avoid accidentally shutting down the computer. And if you need to turn it off, you just go here, power and shut it down that way. The second tip has to do with the Intel graphics. I highly recommend that you have the latest version. So go to the Intel website and make sure you've got that latest graphics driver. And for retro games, if you go into the display settings, uh, I recommend playing around with the scaling options. Make sure it is set to maintain aspect ratio. What that means is if, for example, you play uh, an older game that's got an 800 by 600 resolution and we click yes, it will uh, look like that in the proper 4 by 3 aspect ratio. And the last tip is for those of you who want to do a clean Windows 10 installation. So these uh, computers like the Lapbook coming from China, they usually have an international version of Windows 10, which is not too bad, but I always prefer doing a clean installation. But before you download the uh, Windows 10 installation onto a USB stick and wipe the hard drive, do go into this folder, Windows System32 Driver Store File Repository, and 
down are copy all these files onto a USB hard drive or flash drive. These are the drivers um, for some of the components and Windows 10 will not find all drivers on these devices that come out from China. I've um, uh, found that out the hard way. So do copy all those drivers and what you then do, uh, any unknown devices in Device Manager, you just point it to that um, backup of these drivers and it will install all your drivers. Okay guys, I think it's time to wrap up this video. Here I'm just practicing my retro driving skills because apparently they're not good enough for some of you. So I think this project was a success. So we saw a boost in performance in Portal from around 60 to 80 FPS. So that's a 30% boost and it's free to unlock that performance on a cheap laptop and that's really what this is all about. Um, do let me know if you want me to uh, try out any other projects. I'm always interested in hearing uh, what you like to see. And that's really it. So please subscribe if you haven't done so already. Give it a like, share the video, leave a comment, the usual YouTube stuff, click on that notification bell. And that's it for me. Thank you so much for watching and I shall see you soon with another one.